Hello and welcome to the history of Babylon 5. Today we're going to be covering the Primus class battlecruiser. And here we go. The Primus class battlecruiser was a mainstay of the Centauri Republic fleet. The Primus was built by House Travari Armaments at the Havaria Orbital Shipyards at Tolanus 7 a very powerful warship compared to its contemporaries. The only real weakness of the Primus is its lack of fighter bay facilities. During the last days of the Narn Centauri War, several Primus-class battlecruisers were outfitted with outlawed mass drivers and were used in the planetary bombardment of Narn. The Primus standard armament of two twin-barrel heavy pulse cannons allow it the equal ability to deal with capital ships and fighters. Despite this, without fighter support, the Primus can quickly be overwhelmed by intense barrages from enemy fighters and a powerful defense grid. Since the Primus's introduction in the 2150s, the design underwent only one major upgrade. Starting in 2223 and proceeding through 2228, the ship's pulse cannon armaments was upgraded to eight twin-barrel heavy Centauri pulse cannons. While significantly older than the Vorchon class cruiser, it was nevertheless the most powerful warship of the Centauri fleet, and in the glory days of the Republic, was the symbol of fear for many of the younger races, save of course the Membari, a race even the Centauri Republic never attempted to challenge. Centauri fleets tend to be comprised entirely of Primus class ships, to make up for their lack of fighter escorts, they attack in a combat box comprised of multiple staggered wedged formations. This allows their ships to concentrate firepower on targets directly in front of the fleet while simultaneously protecting one another from fighter attack through the use of interlocking fire. Thus, Centauri formations are truly vulnerable to attacks from its rear. In combination with the Vorchon class medium warship, the Centauri adopts tactics reminiscent from the Earth Alliance, which employs Nova and Hyperion class ships, with the Primus cruisers providing fire support for the Vorchons while fighters screen the fleet and attack vulnerable targets en masse. The Turgati was a Charlin class war cruiser operated by the Membari War Council of the Membari Federation. Trigati was involved in the Earth Membari War and did not surrender when ordered to do so by the Grey Council. When the Membari ships were ordered by the Grey Council to surrender at the Battle of the Line, the commander of the Trigati committed suicide rather than surrender. Kalane, the second in command, took control of the ship and went into hiding. The crew wishing to honor their dead captain by defying the council. For 12 years the Trigati survived in deep space, usually masking their whereabouts. However, Earth Force ships received word that it had been spotted in places no Membari ship belonged. The Trigati came out of hiding when John Sheridan took command of Babylon 5. The crew hoped that they could force Babylon 5 to destroy them, allowing them to have some honor in death and perhaps even reignite the war. Sheridan, however, sensed that he was being set up and refused to fire on the ship. Instead, he called on another Membari cruiser nearby in hyperspace. The cruiser jumped in and demanded that the Trigati surrender. When the rogue vessel refused, the other cruiser destroyed the Trigati's engines, making escape impossible. Rather than surrender, the crew caused the ship to self-destruct, broadcasting the word honor just before it was destroyed with all hands. Today's episode we're going to cover the Vorlon Transport. And here we go. The Vorlon Transport was a class of ship in use by the Vorlon Empire sometimes to transport diplomats to various locations. The transport has organic qualities, including the use of organic technology. Each characteristic possesses a layer of Vorlon bio-armor in addition to four sail-like folds, which can extend outward during flight. In addition to these features, vessels of this design are implied to have an intelligence and a will of their own. The ships are described on more than one occasion as singing to their occupants. Ambassador Kasha's Vorlon transport arrived at Babylon 5 in 2257 and docked in Bay 9. Two years later it was primarily docked in Bay 13. The ambassador used this transport to travel to and from the Vorlon Empire. Kosh and the ship also seemed to have a partly symbiotic bond. In 2260, the vessel docked with Babylon 5, 
with Lita Alexander as a passenger. When Kosh died, the transport set course for the nearest star, where it supposedly met its end. The replacement for Ambassador Kosh also made use of a Vorlon transport. The ship appeared to have been destroyed when he and Kosh battled, but it eventually rebuilt itself and was used by Sheridan and Ivanova as a safeguard against the shadows taking over Ivanova's new Warlock-class destroyer, the EAS Titan. The Berserker Probe was a small, unmanned vessel of unknown class. The probe sought out civilizations capable of answering each of its questions, and if the questions were answered correctly, it exploded in order to eliminate any perceived threat that it encountered. The probe first arrived in Babylon 5 space in January 2260. It initially sent out an unknown transmission, which was translated by the crew. This message contained a promise for cures for diseases and other advancements in exchange for being able to answer every question it asked. Failure to answer these questions would mean the destruction of their civilization. Scrambling to find the answers, the crew worked tirelessly to come up with the solutions. Before the answers were sent, John Sheridan had second thoughts. He surmised that the probe would not likely destroy a less advanced race, but one that may be able to challenge it. He withheld the answers past the deadline, and the probe began to depart. But to keep the probe from harming any other race it came across, the answers were transmitted from a secure bot far away from the station. This caused the probe to detonate with an explosive yield of roughly 500,000 megatons. The Jatak was a Jaquan class heavy cruiser in the service of the Narn regime. It was one of few Narn warships that survived the end of the Narn Centauri War. In late 2259, the Jatak was scouting for potential targets in enemy space when forces of the Centauri Republic attacked the Narn homeworld. After the Centauri drove the Narn government to surrender, the Jatak and its crew became fugitives. They were hunted by Centauri forces for months before they finally arrived at Babylon 5. The ship's captain, Nakel, asked Earth Force Captain John Sheridan for sanctuary and assistance with repairs. Sheridan agreed to this request. At exactly the same time, representatives from the Earth Alliance were negotiating a non-aggression pact with the Centauri. Word of the cruiser leaked out to Frederick Lancy of the EA Ministry of Peace, who in turn informed the Centauri ambassador Londo Malari. Malari contacted his government, which responded by sending a Primus-class war cruiser to capture the Jatak. When Sheridan refused to hand over the Jatak, the Centauri cruiser opened fire on Babylon 5. The station and its Star Fury squadron returned fire and destroyed the cruiser, allowing the Jatak to escape. The incident caused a severe but brief rupture in diplomatic relations between the Earth Alliance and the Centauri forces. Remnants of the Narn fleet not destroyed or captured by the Centauri eventually joined the struggle against the Shadows, led by John Sheridan with the heavy cruiser Jatak in particular playing a pivotal role in the early engagement in 2260. Needing ships to aid in the defense of the station, Captain Sheridan and Jakar invited the Jatak to come to the station. Jakar met with Nakal and discussed the postponing of an open strike against the Centauri so that the Jatak could provide an escort to the White Star. Nakal refused, feeling it would surely be a suicide mission and not wishing to risk one of the few Narn vessels still functioning. After Sheridan embarks on the mission, Babylon 5 security chief Michael Garibaldi angrily confronts Jakar about not forcing Nakal to go forward. Persuaded by Garibaldi, Jakar convinced Nakal and a host of other League of Non-Aligned World members to mount a small task force and rescue Sheridan. In the combined attack, the Jatak and the White Star managed to destroy a shadow vessel. The Jatak later participated in the Battle of Sector 83 and assisted in destroying at least one other shadow vessel. A mass driver is a device that accelerates payloads to high velocity using a linear electromagnetic coil. Since a mass driver is essentially a means of propulsion, like rocketry, it can be put into several uses, both benign and destructive the latter was perhaps being the more notorious. The use of mass drivers in warfare, accelerating asteroids to bombard a planet from space, has been outlawed by every civilized planet. 
In 2259, at the conclusion of the Narn Centauri War, the Centauri Republic used mass drivers mounted on Primus class battlecruisers to decimate the surface of Narn for four days. In defiance of protests from the Mimbari Federation, the Earth Alliance, and the Vorlon Empire. The resulting destruction destroyed entire cities, causing hundreds of thousands of casualties and utterly destroying the infrastructure for power, water, medical treatment, and transportation over most of the planetary surface and causing the planetary economy to collapse. The long-term consequences made Narn, a planet already practically strip-mined some 100 years earlier, even less habitable by throwing up massive amounts of particulate matter into the upper atmosphere, radically altering Narn's climate and weather patterns. Even a full year after the initial bombardment, the planet was still plagued by a ceaseless wind and a partial nuclear winter effect that drastically lowered the surface temperature, both during the day and at night. Though by 2269, the use of Mimbari atmospheric purifiers had managed to clear most of the dust particles. Mass drivers can also be used as ground-based launch platforms to catapult payloads out of a gravity well, without the need of rockets that require large amounts of fuel. One such example is the mass driver at Von Braun Shipyard on Luna. In 2116, it was used to launch the Himdal probe, with the addition of a second stage rocket intended to update the deep probe network in a renewed effort by Earth Alliance Senator Lee Crawford to search for non-human intelligence by monitoring tachyon emissions. The White Star class was a class of advanced warships maintained by the Anna Shock. Utilizing Mimbari and Vorlon technology, it served as the backbone of the Interstellar Alliance's fleet. They were manufactured at the Valen I manufacturing point in the Mimbari system. These ships were classified as a medium cruiser with a length of 475.6 meters, crew of 50, jump gate capable, and artificial gravity. Their weapons include one quantum discharge beam cannon, two neutron cannons, and two fusion cannons. Their defenses include magnetic discharge beams and Vorlon defense systems, and they had four Nile heavy fighters as their auxiliary craft. The first White Star was developed in secret by the Analashak under the supervision of the Vorlon Ulcras and the chosen one Genomir throughout 2259. By November, the first batch of three prototypes were ready. Though they were only scaled-down fighter-sized White Stars, they were essential in the testing of the viability of adapting Vorlon and Mimbari technology. Their first real test flight was a mission to prevent the Shadows from using the Temporal Rift in Sector 14. Three of these fighters were piloted by the newly qualified Rangers, Marcus Cole, Catherine Sakai, and Jeffrey Sinclair, piloting the third. The mission was a success, though it did come at the cost of Ranger Sakai, whose fighter fell into a time distortion. In January 2260, the first full-scale ship was complete and presented secretly to Captain John Sheridan of Babylon 5. Though due to problems with the warrior class, the initial crew was almost entirely comprised of the religious caste. With the assistance of the worker class, a massive round-the-clock effort was begun to put the White Star class into full production, and by the end of December 2260, the rest of the White Star fleet had been completed, just in time to participate in the Battle of Sector 83. After the defeat of the Shadows, the fleet gathered at Babylon 5 for repairs and recrew. At that time, many Rangers replaced the religious cast as the crew of the vessels, and continued to do so as more trained personnel became available. The presence of the White Stars at the station became politically troublesome for Sheridan, as Earth President Clark spun the propaganda that these ships were to be used as an invasion force against Earth by Sheridan. The ships did serve as part of the Liberation Force, along with the Earth Force warships and overthrew Clark. The White Stars were also used to escort Delenn back and forth to Membar, so she could coordinate with her caste in the civil war amongst the Membari people. The White Stars served in an entanglement with the Droth, 
when that species preyed upon commercial transports, including ships allied to the Mimbari, and promised protection by the religious caste that the warrior caste no longer felt obliged to uphold. The Droth offered their services to Delin to assist on her side of the civil conflict in exchange for a home within Mimbari space. Their offer was a ruse to lure her into a trap that the Drak planned to use as revenge against the person that caused them to lose their previous home, Zaha Doom, and their masters, the Shadows. The White Stars destroyed the fighters and the heavy cruisers, which acted as a mothership to the group. After the Membari Council was reformed and the civil unrest resolved, and the Earth Civil War ended, the Interstellar Alliance was formed and assumed ownership of the White Star Fleet. Their primary duty was border patrol of the member territories and protection of the commercial shipping lanes. Their first big task as part of the ISA was to provide aid to the Infili people who requested help from the Alliance against Raiders. President Sheridan dispatched all White Stars of the fleet to rendezvous with the Drazi fleet for backup. After learning that the Drazis were behind the raids, the White Stars moved in early, destroying the raiders and waiting for the Drazis to follow or admit their duplicity and relinquish control of the planet. Upon returning, the fleet engaged an unknown alien force that was scouting out Babylon 5 for possible invasion. The station was about to fall from the prolonged attack when the fleet arrived and cleaned up. These various engagements cost the fleet heavily in ships. They had been going up against full-size cruisers, destroyers, as well as fighters. Sheridan realized that the fleet would not last, and knew that the Mimbari were not building replacements any longer. He convinced Delenn to approach the Great Council and have them approve a joint production venture with the Earth Alliance to build destroyer-sized White Stars to supplement the fleet. The Mimbari would supply technical specifications and advanced technology, and Earth Force would build and pay for the construction, also acquiring new technology for itself. These are one of the newest class of Mimbari attack ships, whose duties have been delegated to the Rangers and the Interstellar Alliance. These were also the first non-Vorlon ship designed in cooperation with the Vorlon Empire so they could incorporate features such as Vorlon bio-armor that would normally be found only on Vorlon ships. These ships were built to be both maneuverable enough to engage fighters and have the punch to take on capital ships when operating in groups. These were used as the predominant weapons in the Shadow War between 2259 and 2261 and proved themselves to be formidable vessels taking on vessels many times their size and winning. This incredible performance is in part due to the advanced Vorlon components found in the ship, such as the bio-armored hull, which is capable of learning from experiences and adapting itself to better protect the ship in new engagements. This hull also gives the ship the ability to heal itself after it's been damaged. These ships are also capable of creating their own jump point into hyperspace, without using a jump gate, giving these ships tremendous flexibility on the battlefield. After the White Star 1 proved a success, the Mimbari began working around the clock to build a fleet of White Star ships numbering around 100 to 150 hulls. Thank you for watching the history of Babylon 5. Special thanks to the Babylon Project for all information you heard today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.